Hello, this is a short revision video on the supply and market chapter of the markets and market failure unit of the AQA economics AS level. Enjoy! Here are some really basic yet really important definitions. So supply is the amount offered for sale at each given price. Market supply is the sum of all of the individual firms supply curves at each given price. So it's the supply from every single firm, so say there's two firms, there's my firm and your firm, and my firm makes 20 plants at £20, and your firm makes 30 plants at £20. Total supply of plants at £30 is 50. Firms have a plant supply and then there's an actual supply, so plant supply is the amount that producers plan to produce at each given price, whilst actual supply is the actual amount that producers produce, which may differ from planned. Uh, supply due to breakdowns in production, staff absences, or maybe excess, like sometimes firms make too much by mistake. Just stuff like that. Here is an image of a supply curve, and I know you're thinking, why does it slope upwards? Well, it slopes upward because firms aim to maximise profits, and profits rise with price. So when the price rises, firms see an opportunity to increase profit. They think, aha, I'm going to make more and sell more and make more money. So they increase their supply, and well, supply increases. And firms also get encouraged to go into the market. So say I'm sitting at home thinking, I need something to do. And then I suddenly see the prices of potatoes or something have skyrocketed. And I think, aha, I'm going to make some potatoes and sell them and make loads of money. So new firms enter the market when prices rise, which causes supply to increase. There are also different levels of efficiency of producers. And less efficient producers can't compete until the price rises because maybe they can only break even, they can't make a profit, they make a loss when they produce. So when the price rises they can suddenly make a profit so they enter the market, they increase their supply when price rises. Woo! Now we're going to do about movements along the supply curve. Remember we only move along curves if there is a change in price. If there is a fall in price, there's a fall in supply because less firms can afford to produce so they have to cut supply which causes there to be a contraction of the supply curve which is a movement along the supply curve in the direction of the arrow on the screen. But say that there is a rise in price, more producers enter the market, so supply increases, which causes there to be an extension in supply. So we're moving upwards along the supply curve in the direction of that arrow. Ah. Now we're going to do all the factors that cause the supply curve to actually shift. So if there is an increase in total supply, the supply curve will shift to the right, and if there is a decrease, it will shift to the left. And the factors that affect the shifting of the supply curve are raw materials, technology, productivity, regulations, wages, subsidies, indirect taxes, expectations and the movement of firms. Raw materials are a main component of production, so when the prices of raw materials rises, it means that the cost of production rises, which means some firms are, alas, forced out of the market because they can no longer afford to produce and make a product. So this causes there to be a left shift of the supply curve. Obviously, if raw materials decrease in price, firms are like, woo, we can make more for less, and that causes there to be a right shift of the supply curve because more firms enter the market, produce, they produce more because they can afford to do so. Moving on now to technology. It'd be really cool if the words could like grow or light up when I say their name, but that would be too much effort and I'm quite lazy. Anyway, sorry, technology. If the quality of technology rises, it means that when we say technology we mean capital, the machinery used by firms to make products and stuff. Yeah, if technology gets better, increasing quality, it means that there is an increased capital productivity, which means that machines produce more in the same period of time, which means that the cost of firms falls, so more firms are able to enter the market, which means that supply increases, so there's a right shift of the supply curve. Productivity is basically the same as before. This one is just referring to labour productivity, though I suppose any productivity would have this effect. But in the case of labour productivity, so that's output per worker period of time, if workers become more productive, you get more costs fall. So supply increases because more firms can afford to produce. Etka, etka, etka. Right shift of supply curve. Moving on now to regulations. Dun dun dun. If there are a lot of regulations about how firms have to produce the product, that sort of thing, it means that the costs of production are higher. So that means that supply is more expensive. It's more expensive for firms to supply. So less firms supply and supply falls. So that's a left shift of the supply curve. 
Wages are another cost of, well, Dad's just sneezing in the background. Wages are a, another cost of production and if wages rise, then that means that production costs more, so firms produce less and supply falls. Obviously, wages rise all the time, but there's also inflation, so it's important to take both of these into account and we'll come on to wage price spirals and stuff like that later, causing there to be a left shift of the supply curve. But a wage price spiral is really bad for the firm because it means that wages keep going up and up and up so it has to increase its prices which turns consumers away they're like oh I don't want to pay that much but that will come later in fact that's not even in this section it's not even in unit one it's in unit two of economics that's macroeconomics i'm just getting a bit overexcited now we're coming on to subsidies and i'll do them with taxes because subsidies and taxes are like the opposites of each other so subsidy is money given to a firm by a government or another organization in order to cut its costs whilst indirect taxes are taxes placed on goods or services which make them more expensive which increases the cost of production for firms because firms tend to take on the vast majority of the cost of the tax. So say there is a rise in subsidies that will cause there to be a right shift of the supply curve but if there is a fall in subsidies that will be a left shift whilst for indirect taxes if there is a rise in indirect taxes that will cause there to be a left shift because firms will have to pay more production is more expensive, that sort of thing. And if there is a happy fall in indirect taxes, it causes there to be a right shift of the supply curve because costs of production fall. So firms produce more, firms supply more, so supply curve shifts right. Moving on now to expectations. And if prices are expected to fall, firms think, oh, we better produce now, you know, whilst you know, we can still afford to produce. So there's a massive increase in supply, causing there to be a right shift of the supply curve. You know, I look really stupid here. I'm just doing actions of my hands, like, shifting them to the side. But you can't see that. But people just sort of walk past this room and they're giving me weird looks. And finally, the movement of firms. If loads of firms suddenly enter the market, loads of new people think, oh, I'm going to start a business in potato growing. For example, the market for potatoes booms. Boom, boom. Uh, sorry, what the hell? Uh, the market for potatoes booms, yes. That means that total supply of potatoes increases, say, at a given price. So that means that there is a right shift in the supply curve for potatoes. I wonder why. Then, say, suddenly, a year later, all the firms realised that potato growing was a really bad thing to do. They regret it, and they all start leaving the market. It means the total supply of potatoes falls, so loads of firms leave the market. I've said that. They leave the market, so supply falls, so there's a left shift of the supply curve. Obviously, as with the demand curve shifting, all of these have inverses. So, for example, I talked about regulations increasing, causing cost of production to increase. Well, you've got to just know that if regulations fall, there's less regulations, cost of production falls, so supply increases, that sort of thing. One really special type of supply is joint supply which is when the production of one good results in the production of another. For example, if we start producing more wool, you know, we've got more sheep, hence the sheep on the screen, more wool will automatically get more lamb, so that's great if you love lamb tikabuna or lamb chops or whatever you have with lamb. Personally, I prefer beef, but a cow seemed harder to draw. But if we did have a cow, you know, increased production of beef for me, because beef's just fabulous, uh, that would lead to an increased production of leather because leather comes from cows. Moo. And that brings us to the end of the supply revision video. I hope you haven't got too bored and that my voice hasn't annoyed you too much. And I hope that you've just not learnt something, but you've revised what you already knew. And good luck in the exam. Have a lovely day. Bye.